on everybody season two episode one first thing we got to do is get the game set up now let me explain a little bit how this season is going to work what I do or the way that this show works is I play the game first by myself no audio nothing then I go back and I watch it I watch myself play because normally when I play I'm either really really high or either really really drunk one of the two so I don't really remember everything that's happening or happens so it's almost a surprise to me when I'm watching it back so then I record myself watching it back reacting to it after I played it so that's basically how this show works that's why I can keep both hands free while this screen is still moving <laughs> So welcome to season two. So let's talk a little bit about what happened with King Cristobal from season one. Season one ended on a good note. We were able to become King of Canadius, but when I got the Royal Court update, unfortunately, my save file did not go well with it. So what I'm doing now is deleting the previous Iron Man save file and creating a new one. We burn in the boats, we starting a new. So, because we're starting anew, that gives us a chance to meet a totally new cast of characters, new people, new storylines. Everything is new for our chubby-cheeked protagonist. <laughs> I don't know why my dude is so fat. I didn't make him fat. Maybe it's because he's young. He's only 17. Or he might be 18. He's really young. For those of you who don't know the story of King Cristobal, go back and watch season one. Uh, for his backstory and those type of things. What I've decided to go with for this particular playthrough is that he was trapped in a multiverse. He woke up and he was not the same crystal ball. He had a, he, he felt the same, but he didn't look the same. Something was different. And he was like 20, 30 years younger, but in this other reality, he still has uh, the chiefdom of Canadius, but now he has all of the knowledge and wisdom from going through that other universe that he can use and apply to this universe. So he don't know what happened. He don't know how he got here, but he remembers all of the experiences that he had from before. And now he's gonna use them to hopefully have a good run. So we'll see how it goes. Our first commander, our first commanders are people that are in our party. We got a Hamantu, uh, Yugi Earthian, we'll call him Yugi, Ertilian, and Gita. So, first thing that we want to do is we definitely want to get the court set up appropriate. It's the first thing you always have to do. And maybe there'll be one or two people that you'll find from this particular original group that you can keep around and that'll want to be, you know, be a part of bigger and better things, as they say. Um, so we got Ahamatu, who's a seven. We got a pretty good counselor as far as the um, religious guy. So we got four out of five champions. We got a little over a thousand troops. We're brand fucking new. Yalem is a nine, but none of our guys are nothing to write home about. So one of the first things that we definitely gonna have to do is to try and recruit some new soldiers uh, so then that way, you know, we can get our team together. So what I want to do is I want to try to get as many commanders on my team from the jump as possible. One thing that I've noticed, and if you hear audio in the back, is because I tried to do this without the fan, but man, it is impossible. I don't know if it's cold where you are, but it is fucking hot where I live, and I gotta have that fan on, otherwise I'm gonna burn up. My balls are hot. Anyway, all I'm doing now is just going through trying to make sure that everybody on my original council is, uh, if not married, we gotta find somebody that I think is worth 
keeping around. Selenoth is going to die here pretty soon. Ahamatu is from the old religion. Yugi will probably keep him around. I like this guy, Artillian. He seems like a pretty good dude. He's generous, he's wrathful, uh, and that's either, and he's paranoid. <laughs> so he, somebody watching me. <laughs> he thinks somebody watching him, you know what I'm saying? If he thinks somebody watching him, it might be best for me to put him with the spot master, <laughs> right? So then at least the motherfucker who's watching him is his own wife. So then he ain't gotta be paranoid. She's definitely watching you, my dude. And she's fucking nuts, by the way. She's sadistic, but trusting. So if you cheat over her, if you cheat on her, she's going to fuck you up. <laughs> it's probably not the best idea to cheat on Gita. So Gita is actually a four-star spy master. So we got a pretty good spy master to, uh, to start the game off with. Adolfonso is a coward. Nope, sorry, brother. We not go keep. We definitely can't can't have you around. We don't like cowards around here. Not in Grand Canarias. Can't stand a, a coward. So first thing we wanted. Well, let me see. I think yeah. I think the best matchup would be uh, her and Ertilian, since they both counselors and they're both lowborn. So in this particular playthrough, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have two particular classes of people in my court. I'm gonna have the lower, lowborn class, and they'll continue to have babies, hopefully, and that it will be what'll comprise my lower ranked commanders and generals. Uh, but the upper, the royal guard, the upper level generals, the ones who actually get, can get married, those are going to be like my royal guard. So those would be like my bodyguards, my executioner, well, not probably not executioner, but my royal guard, my bodyguards, shit like that. Also, when it's time for war, they'll be the ones that I'll call upon to defend Canadius from invaders, uh, as far as like any revolts I come up with, or to go and get additional territory. One thing that I will not do in this playthrough is waste unnecessary lives. I think what I've done sometimes in the past, and even on this previous playthrough that I just finished with the new DLC, is that sometimes, so I've learned, one, not to try to rush getting to Empire too quickly. That's number one. But number two, also not rushing to fill your court with a bunch of strangers. What you want to do is you want to fill your court. You don't want everybody to get married. You don't need everybody to get married. It's hard to keep track of all the people when you do that. It's better to have a smaller, tight-knit court, people that you know, your generals that you know, make sure that those guys are married and that their genes carry on and then try your best to manage the genes. I always do these videos right after I eat. I don't have a, a digestive problems. It's like, it's that I always eat right before I do these videos. <laughs> It's always late in the afternoon uh, when I make these videos or when I react to me playing the game, which is usually late at night. So whenever I'm watching these back, I always get burpy. So excuse me. So the goal is to try. Ooh, I like I like Munio. It's a really good match. So the goal is to try to find people where I can get really good quality genes, especially with my guards. Hopefully, those genes will carry on to their sons, and if they have daughters, I can teach them how to either become really good nurses or court physicians or like positions like Ha Almoner or Senchow. There's a lot of different positions available for women now because of the update. So it's not just like the women have to learn how to be soldiers so that way they can teach the young, the young people to be soldiers. No. Sometimes you want you guys to be soldiers if it's a men only clan, but then you can have the ladies learn learning skills. I mean, that's kind of sexist in a way. It's like you can't, can't be a soldier, but you can teach other people how to be soldiers. <laughs> so speaking of soldiers, it's time for me to upgrade my situation. So I think what we're going to start with is strategy, but 
I think the first thing that I'm going to check off will probably be gallant, just so that way if I get into any trouble uh, while I'm out here raiding, grinding for the dough, then I don't get killed. You know, because that'll, that'll be a very short season too. <laughs> so we got new, new backdrop. New backdrop for season two. Uh, no more wood paneling. We just got a clean white wall. I hope one day to learn how to make this, all that shit behind me transparent. Uh, so then that way it's just like the little cut out of me. Uh, but until we get to that point, we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll we'll kind of see how it goes. So until then, this, this works. All right, so we have three territories. We have Grand Canadias, Puerto Ventura, and Madeira. Those are the three territories that we starting off with. Now, our first goal, number one goal, is to create a duchy. Our first, would it be duchy? Yeah, the high chieftain, high chieftain of Canadians would be goal number one. Goal, the big goal number two would be creating a kingdom in which I would need to hold three duchies. So that would probably be like Duchy of Seuss, Duchy of Canadius, and also Duchy of Zamor, which are the uh, Duchy of Seuss and Duchy of, okay. Yeah, Duchy of Seuss and Duchy of Zamor are the two closest duchies to me that I can create. So this is our first time coming across the water, trying to raid. Not only are we trying to raid, but what we're trying to do is establish a foothold on the mainland from which from where we can then launch our raiding attacks so uh this is a big moment for young chic cristobal of Canadians, only 16 and he has declared war on the high chiefdom of zamor we'll see how it goes uh so in the meanwhile while we're waiting for him to touch down uh while we're waiting on the boats uh, to make landfall. Let's see if we can't find a good woman for our chief. Maybe we'll say that for another episode. Who is this? Oh, she looks interesting. Cicineta Sunifries de Barcelona. She's old as hell. I mean, not old, but 23 compared to me. You know what? We gonna wait. Uh-oh. We don't want to run into that. I ain't got no dog in that fight. All right, so let's change the plans, reroute the boat. Let's land in Agadir. We'll go ahead and take Agadir first, and then from Agadir, we'll, work, we'll make our way down to Ifni. That couldn't have happened any better because Agadir, while it wasn't my initial goal, uh, since they wore the, uh, the, the guy from Ifni or Zamor was fighting, it's like he got into a little squabble with his neighbor, which weakened him significantly, which makes my job even much, that much easier. We'll take it. Sometimes you need these little breaks uh, for things to go your way in order to be successful in this game. It's, it's that crazy how little things like that, I just happened to be attacking him when he was being, when he tried to attack somebody that was raiding him, uh, which made him much weaker. Hmm. Tough titty, my friend. Tough titty said the kitty, but the milk's still good. So we got five months left. So the plan will be, since we only need Ifni, I think I'll be okay with holding just the two territories. So if we take Agadir and then Ifni, uh, we may have to do a battle uh, or two. We'll see. But we'll just see how it goes. So our first siege took a couple of months because we have no onagers. Wait, who is this? That's not him. Did he win that? He did win that fight. He won the fight, but he might have lost the battle. Because we only 30 days out from our first siege being complete. 
So we're not greedy. We're not trying to take all the territories, just the territories that insulate the kingdom or the whatever you want to call it, the chiefdom of Canadians. Our three territories are like our homeland, the three islands. We can never let anyone come across the water and get to our stronghold, which is those three islands. Now, if somebody wants to go and try to raid Madaria, whatever, but Grand Canadia is the pearl in the eye of my territory, which means I will never change capitals. What we're going to do is we're going to build the Grand Canadians to be a beautiful, big, developed city. In order to do that, we're going to have to take some slaves. In order to get some slaves and improve the, improve the, improve the English, development, do you speak first thing we're going to have to do is knock out old boy and if So here we go. We're making our way back down. We're making our way down south to Ifni. Uh, to go ahead and take that territory. We're going to have to do this one at a time because my supply lines aren't strong enough to hold us skipping over territories like this. Man, when you just starting out, oh, Artillian gained 25 opinion of me. Okay, Artillian. Hey, man, I hope we can be friends one day. Until then, let's get in this ass. Pause. That's not, what, what, that's no? not, not in the gateway. Not in the gateway. I meant let's defeat our enemies together. <laughs> so we got 1,100. One thing I will say is that the AI has gotten significantly, not significantly, has gotten much smarter as far as how to move. And it's not just moving just to move. It knows what it wants to do. But because I know what it wants to do, it's actually become easier to plan ahead, like kind of plot where it is that they're trying to go. I know that his priority is probably to try to retake back Agadir because he can't face me in a strong one-on-one -on -one match, which is why I went north to head him off, catch him in the mountains, uh, and hopefully we can do some damage like this. Caught him before he made it to Agadir, so let's see what happens. <laughs> Hey, Cristobal with his first battle. So maybe it's because we're in the mountains. Our audience is not shit. But thank God for our foot soldiers. They are winning the day. Besides the fact that I'm a really good commander. I think Cristobal is a really good commander. He's 25 compared to 17 from the other guy. So we got Ooh. Man, thank God he's not allied to anybody. Because if he was, we might be in trouble. Down to 900 soldiers, and he's down to his 500. Come on, man, keep pushing, keep pushing. Down to 800. Ooh, it's close. We got about a 200, 300 soldier advantage, but we look to be winning the rolls. 11 to 5, good, good. Tight, 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 tight. tight. Yeah. yeah. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Our champion, Amatu, was main. Ooh. Oh, Amatu, I barely knew you. Damn, bro. So let's see. Down to 700. Now we just gotta clean up the mess. Finish it up. Finish them up. Finish them off. Nope. <laughs> Pause on that too. <laughs> 600. So all in all, pretty good. Pretty good fight. Considering it was his first fight. Um, it looks like they had a little bit of an advantage as we were fighting in the mountains. But how did? How is that possible when he had the horses? Maybe from his culture, they got something with the horses. I don't know, but usually when I try to get horses, they tell me that we have a disadvantage fighting in the mountains, especially in the desert mountains. Now, I know that with the war camels, you can do that with the war camels. You can move the war camels and fight with them in desert and desert mountains. You actually have a little bit of an advantage, but normally not with the horses. So, interested. Uh, to see why that is, but we're now at 37%. Uh, that should get us over the hump. All we need to do now is complete the siege of Tarendance, which is in Ifni, which was our initial goal. 
Uh, and that should do it for us. So, pretty successful first campaign to establish ourselves in the mainland. Uh, we were able to pretty much, well, we had our first fight, which was really good. Oh, look, he's back again. Damn. How the fuck did he get back so fast? Shit. So I got seven months left. I know where he's going. I pretty much know where he's going. And I've already started. I'm going to just finish this. I know where he's going. He's going to probably try to loop back around to get back to Agadir. That's what I would do if I was him. So what I'm going to do is just sit tight. We're going to finish off the siege. And then after we finish up the siege, worst case scenario, we can either ooh, damn, less, less than a thousand two. I think this should do it though. I think we should be good with this. Hopefully. As long as he ain't got like no other hidden troops or nothing like that, you know. Can I raise some more troops? Nope, I can't raise no more troops. It's getting a little tight. We definitely gonna have to uh, think about upgrading our army. Cause the goal is about two thousand to 2,500. If you can get to about 2,000 to 2,500 um, during the 900s, that's a pretty nice sized army. Uh, and then from there, you definitely have to increase as time goes. I think the two main things that you have to remember is that money, you can never have too much money. Uh, and in the beginning, during this time, before you switch over to feudalism, your best bet is to try to save up as much money as you can, but not just save up enough money, also save up as much prestige as you can, so that not, because the prestige is what funds your, hold on. All right, so we at 80%? Man. All right, so I guess we're gonna have to fight this one off again. Ooh, oh, we upgraded this shit, okay. All right, motherfucker. Well, now it's on God damn it. So we should meet him right there in the underpass, uh, and then we'll see what he about. We'll see, we'll see if he about that life. So, <laughs> so Asa. Ooh, this one was way easier. Felt like maybe it's because we know what he about. We know he ain't about that life. Oh, my dude got maimed again. Damn, they cut that nigga arm off. Murillo got wounded. Woof. Damn. Tough, some tough fight right here. Oh, and that did it, yes! 100%, we'll take it. All right, excellent job, fellas. Thank you to my new commanders. Thank you to, uh, to my soldiers. Thank you to the archers. And to the Abukar, the foot soldiers. Nice, all right, so we'll end it there as far as for episode one of season two. Again, season one, is a different King Cristobal. In heart, in mind, no. But in physical appearance, yes. He's different now. He looks different. He has different traits. But the spirit of King Cristobal lives on. It is still the same guy up here, in here, and in here. Same guy. It's just that now he's been given an extraordinary opportunity to rewrite his life. Start from the beginning, from the very, very beginning. Let's see how things develop for King Cristobal, or now Chief and Cristobal. Will he get married? Will he have many children? Who will rise from the lower ranks to become, how, who will go from being a small fish to being a big fish? <laughs> who will rise from the ranks to go up to the top, to come up to the top? Stay tuned to find out. We'll catch you in the next episode. We out. Peace.